the the other biggest news coming out of the W this week was the draft lottery. And Shawnee and I got our uh, immediate reactions out as soon as the, the lottery went live. That's also here on the YouTube page. If you're listening to the podcast, it should be on the podcast feed as well. Wherever you're at, it's there. Uh, but Andrew, we haven't heard your thoughts yet on what a, a lottery that has now complicated everything. It could have all been so simple. It could have just been LA at one and everything would have kind of just fell into place after that. Instead, the Dallas Wings control the WNBA this offseason. And that is funny. Um, your thoughts just in general, like I said, I mean, I mean, Shawnee already, we spent like 50 minutes laughing at this. Oh, so what are, you, what, are you, what are your feelings? It, it feels weird to me because Paige Beckers in Dallas could work. Mm-hmm. It could. Absolutely. It's entirely possible that it can work properly. I do think that we are kind of missing fits within culture and this league when we talk about the page versus Caitlin effect. Um, because the one thing I've been seeing a lot, right. Is people going, well, page needed to be in LA, you know, there's marketing dollars, there's mm-hmm. exposure. She's someone that very much fits that LA vibe, high fashion, a lot of endorsements. Like she is the kind of player that could lean into that and kind of do the West coast version of what Caitlin is doing. And then you hear people on the Caitlin Clark side of things saying, well, you know, our girl had the motion wherever she yeah, went. Motion follows, like motion yeah. follows. Here's the thing with that, because there is a very important caveat to this. A mm-hmm. um, little bit of story time. My first two years out of college in local television, I started my career in Casper, Wyoming. Mm-hmm. I covered a gangly six five, hyper athletic, very raw quarterback named Josh Allen. Right, ah. and Josh goes to a wing place in Laramie like three times a week. He totally leans into like cowboy up, small town, blue collar, overlooked his whole life, chip on shoulder type mentality. He ends up going to the Buffalo Bills and the motion that Josh Allen has now is is a product in part of his development, but also the fact that culturally that's a very perfect marriage for him, Mm -hmm. right? Caitlin Clark has motion. This this is not a deniable thing. Yes. Okay. However, Indiana is not Dallas. Indiana values basketball so heavily that they voted Barry in 2012 and 2008 yes. because, because he was Barry was a hooper. Hooper. It, 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 You know, a hooper. like a like politics doesn't matter. Is your jumper smooth? Mm. You are my guy in the White mm-hmm. House. Like that is Indiana's commitment to the sport of basketball. And you stay within Big Ten country, yeah. and it's not this crazy media environment the way that New York or LA would would have been. And Caitlin Clark said that that was a really important thing to her. That that was the kind of market that she wanted to be in. Mm-hmm. And so, no, this is not the same thing. This is not Indiana as a Mordoban franchise as much as it was. But culturally, she fit that place well. All right. So so if Paige does go to Dallas and the motion does not carry the way Caitlin's in Indiana did, I don't think that is going to have to do as much with Paige Beckers as it will with the fact that Dallas is just not that kind of organization and not that kind of cultural fit as a place, as a city, as a franchise for her. She can still be very successful. I think a lot of that hinges on Arike Ogunbowale and her willingness to share in that backcourt. It also is dependent on who their coach is going to be. They've mm-hmm. got some major questions in the front court coming. Um, you know, to the degree that if if Kiki Ariafin's like a twenty-five and twelve person come the end of the year and makes a Final Four run with Juju, are we a hundred percent positive that they go yeah. with? Because it sounds like Satu's out. It, 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 every indication is unless Paige is the thing that brings her back in, you know, like, so like, I, we, we don't know, don't what, know those, about that. What, what those and, conversations and also, be like. Well, and don't, don't forget Natasha Howard got on oh, already she, said, yo, yeah, she later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, so you have Tierra McCown and Kalani Brown who are kind of similar players stylistically. Mm-hmm. They don't have that second or third level of scoring with them. You're losing arguably your second or third level with a Tash Howard. You might be losing it with Satu Sabali. So this might be a position of need, for them uh, Mm -hmm. is a really good rookie that can immediately contribute in the front court. And so I'm not counting out the idea that the wings mess around and actually put page in LA because they're looking at more of a basketball fit. 
Mm -hmm. How, that with that said, Kurt Miller, the new GM of the Wings. Oh, he was he, he was gassed up. He like, was like, gassed up. One, no, like, yeah, I don't think he was fooling us very much with no. that. Um, but you know, to this point of of rising tides lifting all boats, Dallas is one of those franchises that really skates on a lot of criticism as being a, a franchise that does not put in the work that they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, they are moving a stadium into the convention yep. center between Dallas and Fort Worth. That's going to be a little bit bigger than what they it's currently it's plan, which crazy, is in though. Arlington, about mm -hmm. 7,000 uh, seats in, in the mm -hmm. arena. Um, I'm interested if she can make Dallas work, like if she can make Texas work. Um, mm -hmm. If, to be quite honest, like she is willing to take some of the social stances that she takes, it's a lot going to be it's a lot harder to do that culturally in Dallas than it's going to be in Los Angeles. Let me tell you that right now, too. Mm -hmm. So... I, I think that's something from a cultural standpoint of, of whether or not she will fit there as well. Um, I think it's, I can see the vision of it being okay. I am a little disappointed though. I mean, her to LA would have really shored up oh, that West been Coast. Crazy. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was really needed. Um, but I do, uh, you know, I am kind of interested now in what the sparks do it to because yep. Big Kiki, and you can do front court trio, but your back court is heinous, you know, from, yeah. the, from the standpoint you, of like Olivia Champions Miles to LA. LA is, is there, but but then you got the sky lurking too at pick, you know, uh, mm -hmm. at pick number uh, what is it? They're, they're three, aren't they? Yeah, so the sky are yeah. three. So that's what oh, honestly, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if we see movement within the top four, whether it, it be, um, I, I also think a, another thing that's possible. And like I, I've just I'm not I've spent so much time thinking about this because the Kiki thing especially because I, I think you're absolutely right like I don't think like I would be surprised if they don't go page just because I'll tell you right now I've already received multiple texts from people that I'm friends with in Dallas like that I went to, to school at OU with that are like oh the Wings are, are they drafting page like that are not women's basketball fans mm -hmm. and I'll tell you right now I don't know if they're gonna pass up on that regardless of anything and obviously page is you know a a very good player on top of the motion you know it's, and it's, it's as much a business choice as it is about exactly and they're moving into fort worth like that was a big thing is that they want to be in the metro area next to the other teams because like it's it's kind of like they're there is just a way like arlington mm -hmm. tennessee the cowboy stadium is there like close ish but like it's just it's a not, weird spot no as, some, not, I, as it's someone like, who goes and covers games there it's weird um and it, it feels like you're away from everything and like at a I mean, you're at you're at UT Arlington. You know, it's a smaller college. Like, it's just not the the level that you. Paige Beckers is playing at bigger stadiums now. Yeah. Um, I will say though, I I I am intrigued by the idea of potentially LA being okay with taking Olivia Miles and the Sky being like, mm, no, because they they're set at bigs. Like the Sky taking Kiki Arioffa makes no sense. Uh, but also. <laughs> <laughs> maybe and, and so like I, I could see a potential for like la being like look we're gonna take olivia miles at two what are you prepared to do about it you know and then this forcing this guy to trade up into two i think you could see i'm even interested in the idea of kiki falling i think is is, is another potential option because like if if the sparks are saying hey we didn't love what we saw with cam and kiki at stanford and i think these like if, if you didn't love that and I, I think it, it was at times a weird fit. I think both players have gotten much better since then and extended their game. So like, I, I, I think it would work much yeah. better now than before. But if you're like, the, if the Spartans are saying, Hey, we want Olivia miles. I don't, the sky aren't taking Kiki, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then you get to Washington who has a, 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 a ton of forwards anyways. And I feel like the, the mystics might just say, we're going to take Kiki and figure it out. Cause it's Kiki, but golden state Valkyrie, Kiki, Iriuffin. I'm I'm really cool. here for it. I'm really really cool. here for it. I'm not gonna lie. Like I think I'm probably overthinking that honestly because I I would be fairly shocked if no team in the top four just like look we're gonna take Kiki because it's Kiki and the potential of the player that she has to be. Mm -hmm. But man the 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 fit wise I could see her dropping and once once if if people prioritize guards which I think is a very real possibility with how forward heavy some of these teams are. So it makes you know. wonder it makes you wonder how many of these teams are looking at two year plans too, mm -hmm. you know, because these next couple classes are guard heavy. Well, and here's, cause here's my thought, right? Um, the Liberty did this with Niara Sabali. Mm -hmm. They drafted her because they knew that she was going to need a year of rehab with her injury. Mm -hmm. And so they basically took her to shelve her for a season, preserve the roster spot, 
and just let her be right. What is to stop a top three or four team that could end up in the lottery again next year from draft and stashing someone like Dominique Malonga for a season Yep, and waiting for Juju? No, it's not. Like, I mean, like, like, Fla- like Flauge Flauge is on deck. Lauren Betts is on deck. Yeah. Like there's there's are, some players in the yeah, pipeline. Like say, say you're the Golden State Valkyries, right? Mm-hmm. And you're an expansion team. The expectation is not that you're going to come in and immediately mm-hmm. be good. What – at five, what is stopping you from draft and stashing someone a little higher than anticipated to basically kick the season down yeah. to tank for Page and or tank for Juju, excuse me, and get Juju Watkins at the top of the draft to kick off your expansion franchise in year two? Like that doesn't seem super out of the realm of possibility. No, I think I that's likely to be. I don't honest. think the Sparks can do that because mm-hmm. um, they, I just I think their floor. With the weapons that they have, if they stay healthy, they're going to be too good. They're going to be too good. Um, But you know, it's what what stop it? Well, I guess it wouldn't matter because the wings are a one. But like Mm -hmm. that—that's kind of the thing that I find so interesting about this. Um, But you know, I I would have liked to have seen Paige in a place like Los Angeles. She's Mm going to be fine in Dallas. I think people are underestimating her motion a little bit because she yeah on online and like I think generational like old person thing bro but tiktoks like, yeah bro, she bro, is like, popping on tiktok it is crazy like yeah, honestly like, like yeah. where where i'm kind of at with this like i la would have been super super fun don't get me wrong but the idea of cam and rakia establishing la and you know and potentially and, and whoever else they they end up drafting there so you get la and then Paige has dallas and then caitlin has indiana and we kind of spread this out a little bit more and you got motion a, a, a little bit more nationwide as opposed to kind of more centralized in a couple spots. I'm honestly okay with that. Now we'll have to kind of see how it plays out and in, in to see how the Sparks motion kind of ramps up this season. But Cam Brink can absolutely be a player that has that type of motion. And if Olivia <laughs> Miles is in LA, if they end up going that way, that is a player that people will come out to see. She is so fun to watch. And once mm-hmm. she gets like the, the highlight of that and you be able to be seen in that way, people will come out to watch her. So well, I'm, I'm okay with it being a little more spread out. Well, and shoot, man. I mean, like we had Kiki on the show on luxury mm-hmm. tax. You can find that here on YouTube or in our podcast offerings. But the, I mean, she talked about practicing dunking, right? Like, yep. Oh, come on. Imagine, Kiki, the like, motion's going to follow Kiki. Kiki. <laughs> very often, you know, bringing out a breakaway dunk show in LA in her hometown, like that's going to garner emotion. Man. Like that's going to garner Man. energy and, and glass half full for the WNBA here, having her in Dallas, you need to shore up like the middle of the country. Texas yes. a gigantic, gigantic market. It's yes. a it's a top five media market. It's a saturated media market. De- look, better believe she's going to get some Dallas Cowboys bumps in love. Oh, like, come on. You'll, you'll see some People Dallas Cowboys. Come out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you might see Luca Wings games now. Mm-hmm. Like there is going to be a crossover appeal that I think will be interesting. Like mm-hmm. Paige Becker's and Kyrie collab, that feels very possible in a place like Dallas. We now, saw it. We saw her with Clay at the at the finals. I'm yep, telling you, it's, right. it's the so, it's the Warriors divorcee. You got AZ yeah. headed to Golden State with Steph. <laughs> it's the Warriors divorce. Yep. So it feels <laughs> it does feel like there is there's more here than we think. Yeah. But on I the agree. surface, your first impulse is that kid was LA and she yeah. missed out by not being there. I'll tell you this. I think the upshot of her as a cultural figure in the league, I think it's higher there than it is in DC. Mm. Like I, I really do. I, I think, uh, I, I think DC is really committed to a long-term rebuild, but I also think DC as a, a community and market, frankly, DC is a very black city. And I think DC needs a black superstar mm. to run that franchise up. Mm. Like I, I really, well, it, you know, it's there, it's Charlotte, it's Atlanta. It's, it's a lot of these places where there is a very integral uh, component of, of black women within these franchises, but mm. also within the cultural fabric of the community, right? Like Angel Reese is from the DMV for instance. Yeah. And, and so I feel like you want, superstars within each franchise too that like kind of culturally fit right yeah. like like Jalen Brunson in New York culturally fits in New York I feel like Paige Becker's motion would not be the same in a place like DC mm. I just I, I I am actually okay with that being the case 
her in Chicago would have been fun, but that was the Marina Mabry trade. So, you yeah. know, that's the pick that <laughs> thanks, you James Wade. L M F A O. Oh, man. Could that would have been so wicked if they got the first pick and then swapped. Holy cow. That would have yeah. been insanity. Um, but no, I, I like the wings. I do yeah. think the upshot of it working is actually very fun to think about. Yeah. Now, would it work with Arike and Page? That would remain to be seen. Mm -hmm. But the upshot and the ceiling of if that could work. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be fun. Would be Paige and AZ on a totally different yeah, level. They're always a, you ain't heard of. And then maybe Gino courtside. And I am dying to see what that interaction would oh, look like. Oh, that'd be so Gino funny. That's, oh, Arike and Gino. <laughs> ready. Hilarious. No, I can't wait. I'm going to be, I'm going to be there. I'll be covering games. We'll have boots on the ground there. Whoever they, whoever they pick. I'm excited.